Well, good morning. Uh, it's Saturday morning around 8.30. We are Pilot Mountain again, and I am doing what I promised the Lord I would do, which was uh, every Saturday uh, to take some time to put some words out onto the internet to encourage God's people and to stir people who don't know the Lord or are seeking to come into the kingdom before it's too late. Before we do so, I want to uh, beseech the Lord for help. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to break open the bread of life. And there is no other life but what is found in your word, what comes from the realm of the spirit, your spirit, not all the other spirits, but your spirit. I'm asking that your spirit would speak to us and speak through my mouth and into the hearts like arrows, into the hearts of your people to correct us, to guide us, to encourage us, to build us up. Because a lot of times, Lord, we need to be tore down before we can truly be your house. We need to have some, some uh, holes uh, plugged up properly. And Lord, we have some faulty uh, corners in our foundation that are cracking and they need to be repaired. And sometimes, Lord, we just need a complete overhaul. But we, Lord, we allow you to overhaul us. We allow you, Lord, to correct us. You are the only one that we can truly look to to find real help in times of need. And we are, as a people, as a church, as a disjointed group of people that are called the body but aren't the body yet, as the so-called Christian uh, subset of our country, Lord, we are in tatters. We are in a miserable place. We have so many uh, variants, so many lies, so many deceptions that get people sidetracked from what the central message of this gospel is all about. So today, get us back on center. Get me, uh, help me to stay on center or to get closer to center as I just simply read and comment on your word. We thank you for what you're going to do in advance because we love you, Yahshua. We love you, Jesus of Nazareth. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Father, El Shaddai. We love you because you loved us first and everything we do now is a byproduct of your incredible love being lavished upon sinners like me and sinners like all men everywhere. We all need grace. We all need salvation. We all need the arm of the Lord. And it is not to shorten that it cannot save. Praise God. Praise Yah. In Jesus, Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to connect two things. Um, I had a time uh, of seeking and, and the Lord showed me one of the most uh, central uh, theme sections of the word is in Jeremiah chapter 11 and I'm going to share that and I'm going to tie it to a New Testament passage at first it's going to seem a little strange and seem a little strange to me but I said there is a connection and then with the Word of God there's always a connection all the words of God connect um, he can make the connection sometimes our brains can't make the connection but Holy Spirit can make the connection because you know it's simple God's revealing to man a way of escape from death and the whole Word of God, this whole entire book, is all about how to become uh, free from our uh, death curse. And uh, believe me, if you know you're dead, you want to get out of it. And a lot of the biggest problem in this world is that we think we're alive when we're really dead. But we're dead outside of God's intervention. Jeremiah chapter 11. The word one. which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying. This would tell us that this is not directly the writing of Jeremiah, but is the scribe. It could be Baruch. It could be someone else, but it is written because it was heard. And it is noted as the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. The writer knew that this was not Jeremiah speaking, but it was God using Jeremiah to correct the nation of Israel. And he says, verse two, hear the words of this covenant and I'm gonna say the same thing as we move forward into the next passage, but this is applicable. When the word covenant pops up in the Old Testament or the First Testament, in the First Testament, the word covenant and Israel are bound to the Mosaic law, but it's also bound to the Abrahamic covenant. It's also bound to the Noahic covenant of, of God redeeming the planet from violence through a flood and using an ark as a way of escape and a rainbow promise which said, I will not do this again. A promise of mercy, a promise of blessing. And this covenant to Israel is bound by a set of tenets, sacraments, 
ordinances, precepts, and most centrally known and found in the Torah and the Ten Commandments and all the accrudement elements that were bound up in what it meant to be an exclusive nation under God. And these people who are beginning to experience judgment are now going to get a word from God regarding the covenant. And it says, speak. When God's reminding us, he's saying, speak, not to yourself, not just to your family, but speak to the ones who are bound to this covenant. And those are the men of Israel and the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And say to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, cursed is the man who does not heed the words of this covenant. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that things have changed in God? If God writes a covenant, emblazons it in a stone, burns it into stone by his own hand, his heavenly hand, and then delivers it unto the people, that we could say without equivocation that this is a word of God because no man could write like that. And that this was the mountain shaking, Sinai, and the thunder and the lightnings and the testimony of the glory of God resting down at this marriage ceremony between God and Israel when he birthed that nation through the Red Sea crossing and brought it forth in the uh, simplicity of just simply bringing them out of cruel bondage in the iron furnace and to deliver unto them words of love, words of correction, words of healing, because we were made to worship God, not man, not Pharaoh. We were made to worship the Lord of heaven and earth in spite of all the other lords that try to pretend to be creators. And so he says, cursed is once is the one, and that's bound, bound to us today. Those words bind us as well to the new covenant made in the blood of Yahshua. And he says, I commanded your forefathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace saying, listen to my voice. How simple is that statement? But how foreign is it to us here in America? We don't listen to the voice of God. We listen to the voice of men. What is the latest movement? What's the, the latest cool thing I can watch on YouTube? Um, what are the manifestations of the Spirit that I can check out and see if they're from God or not? We're trying to chase after the best book on this particular topic or the sharpest you know, conference on this particular topic. Wealth transfer, that's a real classic. You know, everybody wants to find out how God's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. Who doesn't want money? You know, the next thing on, you know, how to uh, lose weight in the spirit. Uh, you know, who, who doesn't want to lose weight these days? Uh, how to, you know, raise the dead. You know, these are all fantastic things. But the Lord is saying here, the words of my covenant were written and they represent my voice. And now through Jeremiah, it is just as powerful. It is just as binding. That when Jeremiah speaks, it's just as though the Lord spoke at Sinai through Moses. It's just as, as much as the Lord wrote with his hand on stone, God is now writing with the words of Jeremiah's mouth. And he says, listen to my voice. I use men and I use prophets. I raise them up when my people go astray. I just uh, resent uh, up to my blog site, llifellowship.yolasite.com um, a writing I did a while back called The Modern Day Prophet and I broke it up into pieces but the prophetic voice has always been on the earth and it has always been a uh, segment of people that listen to the words of the prophet and then there's another section the rest who don't listen and here Jeremiah represents that original call that Abel uh, made back in the days when he offered a proper sacrifice.